In this video we're going to see how to set up a Moodle instance on a web host, and we're going to look specifically at how to do it inexpensively. We're going to use a web host with cPanel to install and administer our Moodle instance. And the reason why I say this is inexpensive is that cPanel is a very common dashboard that web hosts use. Uh, so in other words, you can buy web hosting for a monthly or an annual fee, and there are different platforms that web hosts will use. Many Linux or Unix-based web hosts will use the cPanel, and those happen to be very affordable, but at the same time, very functional as well. So I have a couple of hosts that use cPanel. Uh, I have something on Namecheap, which is the example I'm going to use here, and then I have another website hosted on Echo Echo Plus. You see Echo Echo Plus is $750 monthly. Of course, check there for the latest price. Namecheap is is even more affordable. You see, you can get the most basic plan for a little under $3 a month, and that indeed is the plan that I have. I've named two hosts. There are many good hosts out there. cPanel is a fairly common language among hosts, so I recommend just search for a cPanel host that meets your budget. That's step number one. Find a host and sign up. After that, they'll give you a cPanel logon, so log on to cPanel, which I've already done. And then we're going to use Softaculous, which is a software installer. We're going to search for Moodle, and then we're going to go through and follow the prompts to install it. So we see here my cPanel. There's Softaculous Apps Installer up here. We can also navigate towards the bottom and we can choose some of these categories. I'm just going to click on one of the categories to get me into that control panel, and then I'm going to search for Moodle. So Moodle, a learning management system, allows us to do online quizzes and the like, uh, and essentially run a whole course. Let's choose Install now. And this all looks good. You see the drop-down that says HTTP. If you have an SSL certificate installed, you can change this to HTTPS or Secure Connection. That's preferred if you have it. You may need to set it up or your host may provide it for you. Uh, I'm hosting this on a website where I have some JSON services hosted, so we're just going to call it JSON services. One consideration though, I already have a website configured there and I don't want to overwrite it, so I am going to give it a subdirectory. We're just going to call it Moodle, so basically it installs there. Data directory, Moodle data is fine. Now we simply give this a few names, so we could call it Brandon's Quizzes or something like that. So I paused the video for a moment and I just filled in a few details here. Brandon Jones Online Courseware and then Courses and Quizzes from Brandon Jones. Uh, I went ahead and changed the admin password as well, and then I'll change the email. And English is the language that I want, so we'll stick with that. And choose Install. Now we simply allow it to install. And it looks like it gave me an error message here, so I'm just going to take its recommendation and move forward. Now I received a few more errors here about required PHP extension not found. So I went back to my cPanel, and there's a PHP selector, and I noticed that my PHP version at the time was set to 7.1. Now, it gives me this little list of menu options, and I noticed for 7.1, sure enough, file info was not selected, and intl was not selected. So, I probably could have selected those and installed them, but I also noticed if I just switched it to 7.4 and set that to current, uh, this used to say set to current, I clicked it, now it says current because I've upgraded it. That does indeed include the file info and the intl package and possibly other packages that it needs. Just so you know how I got to that window, I went to cPanel and then select PHP version. That's how I got into this window here and was able to bump it up to 7.4. I went ahead and started the installation again and take a look. Congratulations, the software was installed successfully, which of course is what we want to see. And now we can right click on these options that it gives us, both the normal URL and the admin URL. You see here's what it looks like when you're not logged in. Once we're logged in as an administrator, we can change the look and feel a bit. And here is our admin login. And at this point, we've logged in. We can do things like check for updates. We can go in and create new courses and the like. We'll cover all that in a future video, but nonetheless, you see that in less than five minutes, we were able to open up our cPanel, install Moodle, and sure enough, here have a publicly facing Moodle courseware. So stay tuned. I have other videos in this playlist that talk about how to administer Moodle. One that I will point out that might be of interest to you is how to upload a spreadsheet of users because you see, we can go in here through a web interface and we can add a new user manually like so. So in other words, a student. We can also just put them all in a spreadsheet and upload it. That's a good next video after this one. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and stay tuned for the other Moodle videos that I'm going to make. Thank you.